one of the most important things we do in mathematics is to build an equation uh, to solve world problems. Now sometimes those equations that are delivered to us as a formula in the word problem because the problem itself by its nature lends itself to that formula, right? Now other time we have to build our own equation of ourselves. But right now we are going to talk about how about direct variation, okay? Direct variation problems. Now this kind of problems emerge when word problems has a phrases like this over here. Y varies directly as X or Y is direct, directly proportional to X. Okay? Now this sentences mean exactly the same thing as the uh, for P, the existence of K such that Y, okay, we can write this as Y, what this expression mean is Y is equal to some K constant times X. Okay? So, let's just say that you have a k is equal to 3, okay? So, let's, let me just erase this and write this up again. Okay? So, you let's say you have, since we said y is equal to some constant times x, right? Now, let's take the constant as 3. Okay, you would then build up y is equal to 3x. Okay, now if we, if we put this and plug in the value for x, and we get some value for y. If we plug in 0, we get value of 0. If we plug in 1, we get 3. If we plug in 2, we get 6. Okay, if we plug in 3, we get 9, and so on. Okay, you get the point. Now, one thing that I want you guys to notice is that when we increase this number over here, which is this side, it tends to, in relationship, that this side also increases. Notice that it doesn't decrease, okay? And in some cases, if you actually used a graphing calculator, and uh, you might have seen a lot of problems where when you involve, like such as exponential growth, if you have a negative exponent, and um, or a positive exponent, if it's a decay, when you involve this positive integers, it gives you a lowest uh, y value, all right? So this is a unique relationship in uh, y varies with uh, the phrases that contains y is directly proportional to x, such that, uh, that when you increase the value of x, it increases the value of y. Okay, now we can tell that at certain amount of rate, uh, y is increasing at certain amount of rate to change in x. Okay, now the important thing is in direct proportional is that the rate at which the y's values are changing. Okay, that's the important thing, the rate at which the values are changing. Now, you might find the rate at which the values are changing because we already have the constant. Because remember from this formula that so there's some value of y is equal to, if it's proportional or direct proportional to x, there's some k constant involving um, with x. It could be any number, okay? If you take two numbers, you can find out that there's some kind of constant. Now, if you take in 1 equals k3, okay? Never mind, whoops. I wrote that backwards. If you take x uh, 3 and 1, what would happen is basically you divide one, 1 on both sides and boom, you find your answer, k to be 3. Okay, now that's just one case, so let's just try another case where you have x and y. So y is equal to 6, so 6 is equal to some constant over 2, so it would be 6 or equals 2k divided by 2 on both sides boom k is equal to 3 now you see even if you keep going and going you would get the same constant because the constant remains the same okay so you have rate the rate over here is the constant k Okay, that's the main point that we are trying to prove. Okay?
So let me just go ahead and erase this now. Now, for examples, now we, we should start solving some examples, all right, to, to um, get the concept. Because if I just keep explaining concepts, some of the people might just get confused of what I'm talking about. So, for example, if you have a problem that contains the phrase, why varies directly as x. Okay? So, and it says when, okay, when x is phi, okay, y is 3, so then it also says what is y when x is 20, okay, and this method that I'm going to show you guys is way different than the method given in the textbooks, okay? I personally am in 10th grade and I have, and we are going to learn about this. Well, to me, I already learned about this. So in, a, in, uh, in the textbook, the explanation is very different. The formulas are different, but I'm sure if you work out this formula, it's much, much more easier, okay? Much easier than the explanation given in the book itself. So how do we actually solve this? Well, you have some count y okay so you have some value of y is equal to constant times x now it tells you that when x is equal to 5 the y is equal to 3 so y is equal to 3 and then you have some constant multiplied by 5 okay so it would be just 3 is equal to 5k divided by 5 on both sides and then you find your k to be 3 over 5 okay and then all you basically do is for this what is the value of y well we don't know we know the constant because we just found out which is 3 over 5 and then the x it says is 20 now what is the answer well it's simple mathematics is that 5 goes into 4 okay let me just read like that that that's not good enough 5 goes into 4 3 times 4 gives you 1, 2, 12. Okay? So what is the value of y when x equals 20? We can say when x is equal to 20, the y is equal to 12. Okay? It's simple as that. Okay? Now, consider this example. Okay? And it should be on the screen. So you don't have to worry about it. Though I will say it, okay, should be on the screen. Now, the question tells us, according, according to Hooke's law, the distance of a spring is stretched proportional to the force on the spring. A force of 50 pounds stretches spring 5 inches. First, how far will the force of 20 pounds stretch the spring? Okay, second, what force is required to stretch the spring 1.5 inches? Now if you notice, okay, we are done with the question, right? So it says a force of 50 pounds stretches spring 5 inches. So we, isn't that an important information? So let's just write it as important information. So if you have 50 pounds, okay, a force of 50 pounds, the 50 pound Okay, it stretches five inches. Okay, and this is we're talking about spring. Okay, so the first question says that how far will a force of 20 pound force stretch the spring? Okay, so let's just consider that distance is equal to k times f, right? 
or you can say y is equal to k times x if you're used to that okay but the basic formula in this is basically involving physics so we got to use the force and the distance because this is the distance and this is the force okay okay so this is the 50 pound force and 5 inches which is the distance so distance is equal to let me just rewrite it here with another marker distance is equal to some kind of constant times f okay now the constant is what we are trying to find out so the distance is 5 when when the force is applied 50 so we can say 50 on, divide 50 on both sides would be 1 over 10 k is equal to 1 over 10 okay now what we need to do the first question tells us how far 20 amount of force is applied for what a value of y okay so we can use the constant that we found out which says d is equal to k times f now d is what we are trying to find out k is what we have 1 over 10 and you multiply that by the amount of force given which is 20 okay goes into 2 distance is equal to 2 that is in inches okay that is easy as that now the second question says that what force is required to stretch the spring 1.5 inches okay so instead of giving us the force what they have done is basically given us the distance and told us to find the force well isn't it just inverse of each other well yes alright so it's not going to be a hard problem okay because we already found the constant okay so when you have force of 20 uh, 20 force 20 pound force it stretches 2 inches and when you have let's say the distance which is 1.5 and you have the constant 1 over 10 times some force that we don't know you multiply 10 on both sides cancels off cancels off and you would end up with 15 because 1.5 10 times 1.5 is equal to 15 which is basically F so 50 pound force is required to um, stretch the spring 1.5 inches okay so the questions all you have to look is for the phrases that basically tells us the force of 50 pound stretches a spring 5 inches and more on like that okay now not only in circle does this happen to be the case okay it's not only the circle uh, but it happens in inclined plane as well so you have seen an inclined plane and this situation occurs in a circle and also in the inclined plane okay so what we're going to do is talk about inverse proportion now inverse proportion the quotes of the inverse proportion let me just write it down The codes of inward proportion says that A, a variable A, varies inversely okay, as the fourth power of T. Okay, now it's just nothing, there is nothing hard. We can basically say that A is equal to some kind of constant divided by t that is raised to fourth power okay fourth power uh, then you have another code that uh, wording it's not a code it doesn't always say that okay a varies okay whoops a varies jointly as one and double okay now this doesn't mean anything as well it just means you have some kind of constant 
then you have this variable which is i and then w okay now we can have variations including this several variations one is directly as other is inversely okay this is directly this is inversely well if you notice that directly all, all, doesn't all this contain the word directly in it all right but inversely all this does so it might be helpful for you guys to know that w what question is trying to ask you right so the uh, for let's go ahead and solve one example and this would be our last example this section isn't very hard all you have to do is focus on the wording of word problem that's pretty much it all right so if you focus on the word problem all the word problem is given the information that is given to you is enough okay so y is direct the, the question says that y is directly proportional to z and inversely proportional to the square of x y is um, okay so y is 15 when x is equal to 2 okay and when Okay, so the quotient tells us that y is directly proportional to z and inversely proportional to square of x. y is 15 when 2 is 5 and x is equal to 3. Okay, x is equal to z. Sorry for that. Now, what we need to do is basically, it tells you that y is inversely proportional to square of x. Now, y, we said y, we can write it as some constant over x raised to 2 right and we can solve from there that y is equal to 27 okay we can say that 27 z over y squared then you have 15 equals k to the fifth one divided by 3 squared, then you have 9.15 is equal to 5k. You divide 5 on both sides, you find that k is equal to, you multiply this 